we don't have enough cinemas to be able to sustain single screen cinema and multiplex cinema and indie cinema at the same time people have just we've just come out of a pandemic which is why everybody's now looking to at least make back some of the money they have lost everybody's looking to fill the theaters at all times which is not going to happen with the indie films it's just not going to happen it's not going to be a situation where you can have full screens but when something runs for four to six to eight weeks, that builds word of mouth, that builds an audience. And even if they don't come and see it, then at least the word of mouth is out there. Everything that you're doing on digital is to be able to make it look like a film in the first place. Whether it's adding a grain or the way the light or your latitude and all that kind of stuff is, you're always going for a filmic look. Why are we going for a filmic look on digital if the film is available in the first place? But it is more expensive. And today in India, because you have, you don't have the labs that can kind of do it. You don't have great scanning facilities that can actually sort of like do it. There are a few and far between, but it's getting more and more expensive. So they need much more light to shoot it because it's Nolan and it's Tarantino and it's PTA. They have, they have the budgets. They are, they are prestige filmmakers who will get the money. Nolan is literally the one filmmaker kind of like, I'm sure he's got probably got shares in IMAX because he's the one who's kind of like keeping that yeah. entire format alive. Yeah, percent yeah. Hi sir, thank you so much again for joining. <laughs> it's nice to see you again. I mean, it's been a long time. Yeah, I'm good. It's always a pleasure to, uh, to see you, to chat with you about films. Um, and uh, and I'm such a big admirer of your work, you know that very well. One thing that I've uh, always wanted to ask you, talk to you about is, uh, maybe the, there is a problem of people, you know, being able to, or not being able to understand where to take their films, you know, what to do with their films. If you have to understand in a simple language, if you have made a film, with limited resources, people have met with their friends, they have a film. What are some things that they can do with that film? Uh, how can they make sure that they're reaching the right people with it? And uh, even if they are going to the festivals, what are some things that they can keep in mind? So that's, I mean, festivals have, have been made especially for that reason, is that people, it's the one place where buyers and viewers uh, and film lovers will all come together to be able to watch the movies and, and see what they like and talk about them and buzz about them and uh, and hopefully do business with them. I think the... Your biggest film festivals in the world, whether it's Sundance or Berlin or Venice or, or Cannes, are built around a market as well. So there is a market there that, that helps you. Uh, if you're an official selection of the festival, great, but there's also a market section that helps you sort of like do that. So, And uh, even here, whether it's Ify or whether it's Mami or whether it's some of the bigger festivals, are building in a market section that is going to talk about being able to distribute these films and take them. So that is the one way um, of, uh, of, of doing it. Um, of course, today with streaming being in, in fact, for most, I think indies today, streaming is your place where you actually get the most, um, your big, your better chances are over there. Hmm. Uh, let's put it that way. But uh, so those are the places you can go to. You can show your films over there. Um, but most of the time it's just being able to, I guess, I mean, yes, you have to show the films to the right people. And generally the approach is to either do a festival screening or to be able to do screenings Curated screenings that happen, for example, they happen in, in Bombay. Film Companion does a bunch of them, uh, Smriti Kiran does some of them, uh, where, you know, and we, in fact, sometimes once in a while, it's like, there's a film I really like, I'll always go and call a bunch of my friends and we kind of come them to come and, huh. to, to, you know, come and see the film. So, um, it's about, again, opening it up, just getting the right eyeballs on it, which is easier said than done. Uh, but, but that is the way. But yes, a festival, I think, probably is the, the best option for that. Mm. Do you have any memories of watching maybe like an extremely independent, lesser known film at a festival that uh, really caught your attention and then, um, you know, you, you spoke about it. You really wanted to make sure that people can get to know about that film. Um, I've I'm, I'm done it multiple times, not just festivals. I've, done it. I've recently, there's a, there's a few films that I've seen that I've been trying to tell everybody to go and watch. There's a film called Fairy Folk by Karan Gaur, which is fantastic. Um, I really feel that that's a film that a lot of people should see and should get distribution. I think uh, Nate Shegre's Hegde is a Pedro is a is one of the great great films made in in our in our modern times. It's fantastic. There's a Farazari Shoebox, which is wonderful. Um, amazing movies. Um, and I I'm, I tell everybody I meet like we should, and I'm also made the calls and to sort to figure out how we can end up getting distribution for films like this. It's a tough market, and I'm I'm, I'm not I'm being very honest. It's a very very tough market. It's a very tough world for the indies out there. It's not easy. Um, we don't have enough cinemas to be able to sustain single screen cinema and multiplex cinema and indie cinema at the same time. Um, people have just, we've just come out of a pandemic, which is why everybody's now looking to at least make back some of the money they've lost. So everybody's looking to fill the theaters at all times, uh, 
which is not going to happen with the Indian films. It's just not going to happen. It's not going to be a situation where you can have full screens. But when something runs for four to six to eight weeks, that builds word of mouth, that builds an audience. And even if they don't come and see it, then at least the word of mouth is out there. That happened with Puran. It ran for eight weeks. People heard about it. So when it came down to, you know, people say, today on streaming or then on TV or whatever, at least people had heard about it, won a bunch of awards and, and that stuff because of its run. Huh. But, and they say, even up to Ship of Theseus, for example, you know, opened up to pretty packed audiences in the sun. Uh, but that's not the case right now. Yeah, I think because we've not, we don't watch these movies in the cinema anymore. Yeah. And automatically that makes you feel that. Therefore, the audience doesn't know. So, there's a and, bit of... And because of that, these films are also not getting made in the first place, right? Then, therefore, they don't get made because if the end product is saying that, oh, no one's going to watch that, then who, why would anybody want to do it other than the fact that mm. you have a high net worth individual who is really, really invested in spending a certain amount of money on just pure art. And Which happened with maybe Trishyam films and with Kuneet Munga's production. Without even that, that's also not a, that's not a sustainable model beyond a certain point. Right, 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 right. It's not going to get returns. Why would you keep doing it? Huh. Uh, you know, so the setup in Europe, for example, when it comes to state sponsoring a cinema, we don't have that. Too. AWC is not funding films anymore. There's not enough network, high, you know, HNI people around there to really just invest. Movies also are not seen as culture. They're seen as right. it's information and broadcasting. It's not part of the culture mainstream. Yeah, big difference. So we actually look at me. Look, behind. Two thousand twelve is going on. It's suddenly it's gone crazy. <laughs> it's nice, no? It's nice, yeah. But well, I just hope that festival vibe. Uh, yeah. Um. Uh, abhi, uh, uh, of course, I seen it very recently. Abhi, shayad, I, th- I think he was at Sundance. He was uh, at Tribeca, like one of the festivals, and he said that he has a big problem with the in- independent uh, word being used for for films because he thinks that that is a word that has been generated by the studios. in order to make sure that these films you know always remain within this uh, within this particular tag and they never really get because he he says from his own experience that when he was making taxi driver and all those films like they were just films and nobody was really you know making these bifurcations how do you feel about that if you had um if honestly if the studios did so sort of like funnel all these films and you wouldn't call them indie films but they called indies because the money is coming from independent sources of funding and that's why the studios only get in, involved for distribution afterwards so it's uh, you can call them indies i think well scorsese because in the 70s was an amazing period for american cinema is the fact that you had you take a year like i think 1976 at the oscars and your five nominees were rocky network taxi driver uh, all the president's men one more of that Yeah. such type and look at that that's your i mean so obviously there's nothing independent there because those are all yeah amazing movies made by studios in an independent thinking kind of industry uh where they're putting talent front and center um uh, then that changed um so here it hasn't right like the studios have never got involved in doing anything mm. whether it's udan which was produced by sanjay singh and anurag kashyap and then utv came on board or if it's a masan which was produced by dishyam before then it got distribution afterwards uh through uh, anil thardani or any of the other ones uh, and i mean the closest we've come to studio for our stuff that we did phantom was uh, nh10 which was eros right. but that too because you had anushka in the film so right. it's an indie minded film but is it really an indie film mm. udan you shot on film they right? it was the first film um one uh, like how important was that पहले मतलब ये बताइए आप कि मतलब वो वो डिसीजन आपके लिए कितना इंपॉर्टेंट था टू टू शूट दैट फिल्म ऑन फिल्म इट वाज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट आई 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 रियली वांटेड टू शूट ऑन ए ऑन फिल्म बट आल्सो बिकॉज़ आई थिंक 2009 वी डिडंट डिजिटल वाज देयर बट इट वाजंट रियली अम द कैमरास वांट गुड एनफ द रेड कैमरास वांट दैट गुड एंड एक्सा वाज सो इट वाज लाइक स्टिल द ट्रांजिशन पीरियड या आई वाज यू वर आल्सो गोइंग थ्रू दिस वेरी एक्सपेरिमेंटल स्टेज सो द कॉल एट दैट पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम वाज कैन आई अफोर्ड आई कैन अफोर्ड आई कैन इदर अफोर्ड सुपर 16 एंड सिंग साउंड or i can afford 35 and then dub the film afterwards and i chose the 16 and sing sound because i was working with you know young actors and kids and that kind of stuff and one dub afterwards they were both fake lupta right. so then I, that's when i did that and then lutera again by the time we were started to shoot it digital was there we tested some digital but we didn't like it very much so then we said let's just go with 35 last last chance and that yeah. otherwise i remember while lutera post ke time mein literally i think 
there's only four films that were being done on film at that time. It was very sad. Uh, लेकिन uh, अभी जैसे इस चीज़ के बारे में इतनी ज़्यादा बात हो रही है ना लाइक नोलन हैज ऑलवेज बीन लाइक सच अ प्रोमिनेंट वॉइस लाइक अबाउट शूटिंग ऑन फिल्म एंड नाउ लाइक पी टी एल्सो लाइक ऑलवेज कुछ फिल्म फिल्म ऑन फिल्म मतलब अगर आपको वैसे एक नॉर्मल ले मैन इंसान को समझाना हो कि लाइक वॉट इज़ द होल डील अबाउट इट लाइक वाई डू दीज फिल्म मेकर्स वॉन्ट देर फिल्म टू बी शॉर्ट ऑन फिल्म एंड वाई डू दे वॉन्ट मोर पीपल टू वॉच दीज फिल्म शूटिंग ऑन फिल्म इज इट डेफिनेटली लुक्स more organic better whatever you are you're on digital unless you're really really embracing a digital aesthetic which is not a very pretty aesthetic you know so everything that you're doing on digital is to be able to make it look like a film in the first place or to make it look like film in the first place whether it's adding a grain or the way the light or your latitude and all that kind of stuff is you're always going for a filmic look why are we going for a filmic look on digital if the film is available in the first place which is their logic and that's absolutely right um but it is more expensive um and today in india because you have you don't have the labs that can kind of do it you don't have great scanning facilities that can actually sort of like do it. there are few and far between but it's getting more and more expensive shooting on film is definitely more expensive now because you need much more light to shoot it so um because it's nolan and it's tarantino and it's pta uh other guys were doing it um they have they have, they have the budgets they are they are prestige filmmakers who will get the money nolan is literally the one filmmaker kind of like I mean IMAX. I'm, I'm sure he's got probably got shares in IMAX because he's the one who's kind of like keeping that yeah. entire format alive. What are you present? Yeah. Um. So, um. But yeah, prestige filmmakers can do it, and they can do it here as well. It's just that when we had it, I remember when Kodak came down when when Dunkirk was here, and there's a lot of discussions back and forth then about the guys from Kodak are like, but it's cheaper in the end of the day because you don't have to like you don't have to spend that many hours in in grading and stuff. And we're like, look, the deals here are different. It's not as true as that. But for us, the sacrifice becomes: Do you shoot on film, or do you get an extra five days of shoot? Got you it. Know? And that's a big call. It's a big yeah. call uh, to end up making. So yes, some of us can afford to do it, but do you really? In that and then, which film would you choose to shoot on film? You know, something that, yeah. like, it doesn't make any sense for me to shoot, say, something like uh, Jubilee on film. Doesn't make any sense. It's all there's so much VFX work Got that will become unnecessarily expensive. Or the next one I've done, Control, which is the film with the Nanya, which is all on a computer, all mostly shot on an iPhone. Again, there's yeah. no sense, you know. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. when the right film comes along, I guess makes sense. Chalo Vikram, on that note, thank you so much. Thank uh, you, Arshad. It's always, always a pleasure. Always, always a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, hopefully, uh, one month later again, we'll be split. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sure that you're a busy. That's man. another festival. <laughs> Add mommy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but okay, thank you so all much. Right. Thanks, man. Cheers. This is Vikram Aditya Motwani. Uh, this is Harshad Bansal signing off from Yudhav Cinema.